Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I'm so happy that you stopped in. Subscribe and hit the like button. It does help my channel quite a bit. Now my first article today is how to stop Wi-Fi piggybacking. That is where someone else uh, gets into your Wi-Fi and slows your Wi-Fi down and that's how you can tell that somebody might be piggybacking you on your Wi-Fi. Now the Wi-Fi stealing neighbor might be a whimsical scenario for a show, but it's not a vic victimless crime. Chances are you have a fixed amount of bandwidth and plenty of devices that share it. Thus you do not want squatters seizing a portion of your network's full capacity. Most freeloaders will simply be after free internet access and they're, uh, I'm watching my kitty in the back of me. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, that you do not want squatters seizing a portion of your network's full capacity. Most free uh, loaders will simply be after free internet access, and their intentions won't go beyond that. However, more uh, villainous netizens, N E T I Z E N S, netizens, can use you as a scapegoat for their criminal activities. Hence, be prepared to give such trespassers the boot. Luckily, you can do this fairly quickly as long as you know where to look. <coughs> Excuse me. Why is Wi-Fi piggybacking unwelcome? Wi-Fi piggybacking means that bypassers or neighbors within your Wi-Fi signal range tap into your internet connection. They snatch a substantial portion of your bandwidth, leaving less for you for your own internet connection devices. Many might treat Wi-Fi squatting as a harmless act, but users paying for internet plans would be quick to disagree. Well, of course. Depending on your location, the price tag on your internet connection can differ significantly. A study in 2020 emphasized that NetZeons annually spend $1,109.17 in the U.S., $627.54 in Europe, and $870.86 in Asia for their internet services. That is, that is outrageous. These numbers also include cost covering equipment, router or modem, rentals, and professional installation. However, they do not take into account additional charges that internet service providers might impose. For instance, clients might need to pay more for going beyond data caps. Thus, the consequences of Wi-Fi piggybacking can include staggering bills at the end of the month. And you wonder, why is that so high? You know? Additionally, some I ISP contracts include clauses prohibiting the share of Wi-Fi with unsubscribed and non-paying users. If this is the case, you unknowingly violate this rule by having piggybackers on your network. However, it all depends on your service provider. It might be that they do not mention such responsibilities for their clients. Besides increased financial cost and speed drops, Wi-Fi squatting can lead to more unfortunate situations. Wi-Fi leechers might use your network for illegal activities. And that puts you in a bad spot. Really. Piggybackers might not exploit your Wi-Fi to check social media or stream the newest episodes of their favorite shows. Connecting to an unprotected Wi-Fi within their range can be a cover-up. If culprits commit crimes while connecting to your network, Authorities will initially consider you as the main suspect. You don't want that. Over the years, a concerning number of piggybackers have used their neighbor's Wi-Fi to download child pornography. Thus, owners of networks initiating the red flag internet traffic face severe accusations. While federal agents typically determine the real culprits, the investigation process is nerve-wracking well, of course it would be. After all, innocent users will likely have their homes searched and devices confiscated for further inspection. Well, 
Is Wi-Fi piggybacking illegal? The use of a Wi-Fi connection without its owner's consent can be illegal on its own. Squatters can be faced fines in the UK, Singapore, Italy, Hong Kong, Canada, and other countries, depending on the jurisdiction. Depending on their jurisdiction, in the U.S., the le legality of Wi-Fi squatting might vary depending on the state laws. However, the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act prohibits unauthorized access to computers. Courts can extend this regulation to unauthorized connections to networks. Some states like Texas treat Wi-Fi piggybacking as a Class B misdemeanor. It means that culprits can face 180 days in jail and a fine up to $2,000. How to defect Wi-Fi squatters? If you suspect Wi-Fi piggybacking, you can confirm this by opening your router's surface interface I'm sorry, Router's Interface. Access your Router's Admin Interface. You can do this by entering your Router's IP address in the URL bar of your browser. That's the URL bar of your browser. Type in the required login credentials. If you have not changed them, they should be visible on your router. Find the DHCP settings and look for the connected devices area. It might differ according to your router. Alternatively, the list will likely contain a MAC address. You can verify that this is your device by finding the MAC, M-A-C, addresses of legitimate ones and comparing them. They are usually visible on a label on the device or the box the products came in. How to prevent Wi-Fi piggybacking. Change your Wi-Fi password. In the router's admin interface, you can quickly give your network a new password. Pick a lengthy and complex combination to reassure that squatters won't be able to guess them. Also enable WPA2 inscription, and that's WPA2 inscription. The general rule is that you should never use WPA and disable WEP. You should never use WPA and disable WEP. And that's all in uppercase letters. If you use outdated inscription, freeloaders can crack even the strongest passwords. Network name, SSID, that's on your modem. Note that this option only works if you follow the first tip. You can change your network name or decide to hide it. It means that you disable SSID broadcast and your network won't appear in the list of connectable networks. For freeloaders, it might seem like your Wi-Fi has suddenly gone offline. However, the chances are that they will still find your network. Thus, while this is possible, it should not be the option you rely on. Monitoring, monitoring software. You can use network monitoring, monitoring software to keep track of devices connecting to your Wi-Fi. For instance, Google's routers work with their respective apps. If you can enable a new device notifications to receive alerts every time a new gadget joins your network, however, ensure that you use reliable network management software and treat this, uh, no, and treat third party providers with caution. Use MAC address filtering. You can tell your router which devices can connect to your network. This option works to an extent as you can whitelist MAC addresses <coughs> Excuse me, belonging to your gadgets. Now let me read that again. This option works with an extent. I'm learning too because I didn't know half of this stuff, you know. 
This option works with an extent, as you can whitelist MAC addresses belonging to your gadgets. However, MAC address spoofing is achievable, meaning that squatters might hide under addresses you approved. On the plus side, it might be enough to keep less tech savvy piggybackers away. Limit the number of connecting devices. You can specify how many devices can connect to your Wi-Fi. Count the ones you regularly use and adjust this number accordingly. Note that by default, DHCP allows unlimited connections. However, no device stays connected at all, all the time. However, no device stays connected all the time. Thus, the effectiveness of this option is limited. Protect devices from snooping. A Wi-Fi squatter will have the ability to keep tabs on your activities. Thus, it highlights the need for you to trust each device connected to your network. While a VPN won't prevent piggybackers from using your network, it will script your web traffic. Hence, install them on the devices you use regularly. Presumably, users will spend most of their time on smartphones or computers. Thus, start by securing them. That's good advice um, if you can understand what, what they're saying. Now, I would have to keep going over this article <laughs> to get it up here to what I can do to protect them from piggybacking on me. Now my devices, um, I have very, very few. Um, so I'm not sure how I would do this. I suppose I would connect uh, and call my uh, CenturyLink provider from my vo that has uh, the modem come from and my modem, another uh, point is, how old is your modem? Now mine is very, very old. It works perfect, but it is years old. But I trust it, it works. But maybe a helpful hint would suggest that when you talk to your service provider, you ask them, of course they're gonna try to sell you, you know, anything they can sell, but tell them, hey, my router works perfect, and it's very old, but I want protection to cover what I have hooked into my uh, modem that I can't get piggybacked. I guess that's the way I would do it. I have to be simple. <laughs> I can't get into all this computer talk and try to understand everything that they're trying to tell me. You know, like I said, I'd have to go over this article many, many times to get it up here. But the best thing I think would be to call your provider, ask them for protection, and get some advice. But if you got a pretty well new modem, or even if you've got an aged modem, like I do, and it still works perfect, Tell them you're not interested in buying. You just need some advice how to protect anyone from getting on your service and piggybacking you. I guess that would be my helpful hint. Like I said, I don't understand a lot of stuff, you know, but uh, I think that's what I would do. And um, I hope this helps, you know, because I'll tell you what, you know, the criminals are thick. And when it says that they can trace everything that you're doing, all your activities and everything, and that's other countries, you know, try to get protected the best you can. I'll be back. Let me find my camera button here. I always got to look for it. There it is. And it's pretty big and, and red, but I got to move my mouse all over the joint <laughs> to get it. But uh, give somebody a blessing today. I'll be back.